day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm glad you're back. And I hope that you're still staying healthy as we go through this pandemic. Uh, and we know there's a challenge. Um, this is the uh, 4th of, of May. And uh, it's interesting that uh, the last video I sent out, uh, we were talking about 40,000. Now we're talking uh, 68,000 people have died in this country because of this pestilence. And it's interesting because there's people that say, let's, let's open up. Let's, let's. And, and, and I know it's, it's kind of strange a little, you know, because you kind of say, wait a minute, uh, you know, the model projection that I heard today is by August, and maybe sooner, by August, uh, the death toll could be 135,000. Uh, and people say, let's open up, let's go to the beaches, let's go to the restaurants, let's just open it up. Don't take my freedom away. And, and I don't even want to, some people fuss because they don't want to wear a mask. And I understand that wearing a mask is not the protection of them, more so it's protection of other people. And it also helps reduce the spreading of the disease. But people want to go out and, and uh, into this environment, not understanding. And maybe maybe that's because they're not hearing. You know, the last one we did, uh, we were talking about Isaiah 68, where they hearing but not understanding. I guess the point is, that even though people sit there and think that there's a acceptable risk, the question is, of the 135,000 projected to die of this pandemic and because of our behavior the no one I don't think anyone understand is that you could be of the 135,000 to pass away I don't think I don't think that's perceived uh, is it's, it's they see the death they come desensitized toward the number but those numbers have names family members that has been impacted by this disease. And the number now is around 68,000. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that some of the people that even listen to this video may have known someone who have lost their life. Uh, and then we know some of the heavy hit places, at least in New York, are starting to go down, but it was impacted. And now the other place that potential of spiking up but some people think as well as just for elderly that could be impacted. But I'm seeing people 31, 40, uh, younger, uh, have died because of this, this disease. So I just want to make sure that help people understand. The question is, do you think you, what is it if you become one of those 135,000? What if you become in that number? You know? And I know they're saying that we can't, we want to get the economy up uh, for political reasons. Because that meat factory, I think many of y'all know about the meat factories right now. There's, there's over 4,900 people working in meat factories affected, coming to work sick sweating onto the meat that we eat. Um, mm, I think I think there's some things we need to concern if that if you go into a that's those meat factories, what if we go into a meat packing place facilities, <laughs> your office. And and people become ill in your office, so you keep the building open? Can you keep your business going? 
if you're starting to get that pandemic hitting your location. I, I'll just, just wonder, wonder. And then what about the taking it home from your job to your family? I'm just wondering. It, it's just something that we need to look at and consider. But remember this, those of us who are hearing and are receiving, look to Jesus Christ to be the deliverance for us. And we're going to get a victory out of this no matter what. And we're going to learn some more things uh, concerning uh, this new norm that's going to come out of it. But you know, the, the study today, this is part A, is about the fact that it's being led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Or being led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, Jesus was led after he was baptized. He was led into the wilderness for 40 days and he was uh, tempted. And, and the key point is that he was led by the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's just a perfecting of, of, of his ministry that he was going to deal with. And we are being led. Because the Bible said those are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So those of us are being led. There's times, and we see it over and over again, there's times and times we're going to go through a wilderness experience. But the key to it is that one thing I want you to remember, God said that there's nothing that he will put on you that you can't endure, you know, that you can't handle. And and, and those things that, that, that you can't handle, uh, he is, he'll make a way for you out of those situations. The other ones he'll carry you through so that you'll be perfected to deal with some things further down the road. Because it's a challenge in life, but that's what life is. So just remember that, that you, you're led by the Holy Spirit, and sometimes it is a wilderness experience. But let's be able to go through that wilderness experience, trusting in Him, because He's the one that will bring us through. You know, we did, one of the scriptures we did start off with uh, was in Isaiah 54. Uh, there was a, the, the fact that I'm saying is in verse 1, I had to read a few of them. Verse 1, sing, O barren, thou that does not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, that thou that is not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. But he says here, enlarge your tent, or enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, meaning spare not and expand it, make it room. Lengthen thy cords and, and strengthen thy states. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. We did it one in Isaiah 6. In the, when we were reading it there, the, 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 because the people didn't want to hear, dull of hearing, that eventually, when, the, when Isaiah said, How long? He said, Until the cities are wasted and desolate. Here in 54, God is saying, I'm getting ready to make a change. I'm going to make something that's going to bring forth a blessings and abundance. And so enlarge your territory because you, you need to be able to uh, take on the abundance. So when we finish, when we go through this, go through this. <sighs> go through it trusting and praising and believing in God for deliverance. And watch as you're going to need to expand your tent. For the blessings that come from the Lord. And remember to take care of one another. You know, one of the things brought in is about giving shall be given. You know, a lot of cases we say, well, giving shall be given, goodwill, press down, shaking together, running over the home, shall men give into your bosom. The, the, when we talk about give, a lot of us think about just giving to a ministry. I'm telling you, is why don't we learn to give to one another? There's people out there right now that's in need. So let's look and see how we can help those people out. All right? I mean, there's people in the food lines. There's people that didn't get stimulus checks. There's people that don't have a check. There's people that got to pay their rent, pay their bills, get the food. Hey, if you can give and be a blessing to somebody, be a blessing to somebody. Be a blessing to somebody you know. But just remember, 
what you get, you give it to the Lord, and you get your blessing too. All right. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you again. Oh, another thing too. We start off. We change from the uh, lifestyle video to the Zoom. Uh, it's very good. Uh, this one is kind of working out the bugs of the system. We we kind of kept the sharing of the slides throughout most of the throughout the whole session uh, without taking it off some time. And then when we're talking, a lot of people that you can see the person talking because the, the the main person speaking it blows up and you can see the face. So next time, hopefully, as you see the not this session, but hopefully the follow-on sessions, you'll see where. We'll show the, the slides that we shared when somebody is reading the slide, but when they're not reading the slide, we'll not share it so you can hear that speaker and how God is leading that person. Amen? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, thanks for watching. God bless. Check you later. Bye-bye. All right, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to, to open up your words, oh God, so that you can pour into our hearts and that we may be able to see clearly. We understand that we're in a precarious situation right now, oh God, as this world has been thrown into a COVID-19 pandemic. Oh God, we ask that you bless them, that you be with all those elders, that you put a hedge of protection around those that are vulnerable, that you assist us colored folks as we seem to be the one that's always targeted in every situation, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for what you're do, do, do doing for us. We thank you for this opportunity to look at things from a different perspective and to and to and to establish new normals and new direction, God. We thank you for the pastor and his diligence as he con continues to, to make sure that we congregate and meet and open up your word. Father, that's you bless him and his family. I ask that you bless everybody's family that's associated with what we do, that you keep away harm, sickness, death, and disease from all of us, just as your word teaches us. Again, we thank you for your word. We ask that you open up windows of heaven right now and just pour out a blessing that we may okay. see things that we hadn't seen before, that we may lift you up and glorify you and your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Hey, the slides I put up here, it, it's, it's really called, Jimmy, called Link, uh, being led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Uh, because the fact is that even this situation is, is, is going into a wilderness experience. I think we all can agree with that. Uh, so what I wanted to do was start focusing on the uh, uh, Isaiah 54. Verse 1, let me see something here about my phone. Say, yeah. Isaiah 54. And, and matter of fact, Chris, you know I got to bug you this time, right? Can you take the first five scriptures? All right, I got to figure out to move this out the way and make sure I can see it all. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Isaiah 54. On that one, sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with the child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cord, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, he shall be called. Amen. And you know, I thought, and Jim, I like the fact that say he's the God of the whole earth, even back in the Old Testament. He, you know what I mean? Because a lot of cases, even the Jews will sit there and try to say, no, this is the God of Israel. Right. And, and, and I just want to make sure everybody understood, from the beginning, God was saying he is the God of the whole earth. Amen? Uh, Amen. 
Now, now one of the things about going, you tell me this wilderness, it says single barren, thou that does not bear. Jimmy, that's almost like you, this is an unfruitful woman, right? Yes, you know? sir. And, and, and he said, bring forth into singing, meaning saying, look, look, I, I know your situation been kind of weak for the past, but I'm trying to tell you that things get ready to change. And so therefore I need you to break out and praise in him because he's going to make a change in your life. I like the fact also it said, Jim, on the verse two, it says, enlarge your tent or enlarge the place of that tent because he's trying to say, as I'm trying to open up, Chris, to the point is your current situation, your current spaces is not large enough to contain the blessing that I'm going to put on you. And I question the situation when we talk about, like Jim and put in that political uh, con point in his prayer. <laughs> and, and then he used some old and color folks. <laughs> they are always targeting us, man. Well, you know, I was sitting hey. there, I was looking at that movie last night called uh, Just, uh, Just Mercy. I think it's called Just Yeah, Just Mercy. I saw that. Man, I tell you, boy, that stuff hasn't it hasn't changed much, has it? <laughs> nope. I mean, you know the the the, the killing, bless you, the, the killings, Chris, you know, the, the, the shootings, and then mm -hmm. how many people of color are in, in prison? I, I I think I think we're in the thirty percent. Yeah. Or even higher. Mm -hmm. And like Jimmy is saying is it's like everything comes on us with, with COVID nineteen. In Georgia, the article I read was eighty percent of the deaths were blacks. Mm -hmm. I, I don't hate. know how that I don't know if that's a lie. I don't because <laughs> when I look at the news. I, I do see pictures of their whites and black. And uh, when I look at Russia in Italy, mm -hmm. Italy is, is 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 off the chain. Yeah. Concerning death. Russia oh, but like, have y'all seen Russia? Me. Russia is turning up. Russia's been hit. I, I, I agree, but like say, you don't want me to. You don't want me to go down this road right now. <laughs> you right. don't want it. You don't want me to go down this road right now. That's a discussion because, for another day. Yeah, because like you say, for some reason right here in America, it just so happened to be us. But whatever the major minority is in a certain sector of the earth, or the world, or country, that's who's being targeted with this thing. Like yeah. you said. It's other white folks dying in 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 uh Italy. Let's check out the socioeconomic status of the people that's dying there. Right. Let, let let's not go down this road today. Yeah. So 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 we definitely seem to have been targeted some kind of way, and 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 like the shooting, the prison, and everything else. It seems like we just catch all kinds of stuff here. Yes, sir. <laughs> but the world the world is not playing. It, it's hitting everybody, whether they poor or, or rich is that that disease doesn't care and at I, least, I will be in, huh? at least that's at least that's what they that's what they're telling us pastor oh lord i'm, I'm gonna give it a benefit of the doubt that that the russia is is getting hurt big time uh and i think china even though they want to lie about it i think they really been hurt big time and and I think their complexion is a little little on the on the light side. I don't know about a yellow, <laughs> mm -hmm. real colors. But the bottom line of this lady is saying is in verse Isaiah fifty four saying, "Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth for the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, because he said, like in verse three, for thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles." and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. I'm saying, I don't know what's going on, but I'm telling you that as far as the of God, something is getting ready to happen coming out of this situation. 
Now, this is a wilderness situation. He said right here in verse 4, Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. And when I looked at one of the, that movie yesterday on justice, right, or just mercy, uh, it's, it's a lot to, that they seem to want to make us feel shameful of who we are. But reality, I find strength in that, Jimmy. Because all the stuff that's been thrown at these people, us, they still moving. It's not breaking people's back. It's still starting to say, look, you can sling, you can swing as hard as you want. We're still moving. You know? Uh, he said, he said, and I like the fact this, verse 5, for thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth. And that's who we depend on. And let me go to the next slide. It says in verse 6, For the Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Uh, that sounds like somebody, Chris. <laughs> if you were talking about a race of people. Yeah, I, I, I think he said, uh, I, I, I'm going to call you, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, the wife of a youth, when thou was refused, says the Lord. But I, this, Chris, uh, Jimmy, this is what I'm going to think about is this verse 7. For a small moment, have I forsaken <laughs> thee. Mm -hmm. But with great mercy will I gather thee. And I, I you know, I was talking to my mom yesterday, with uh, David yesterday, we was talking about the fact is, is it possible that, you know, they said that, you know, you know, we was talking a couple of weeks ago, I mean, months ago, about this black Jews, black Israelites and everything else. I, I, I'm not, there's, there's some piece of that Chris that that might I don't know I, I'm not going with them on the boat that that one that's kind of off the chain but we do know that the northern tribe 10 of them right Jimmy that's 10 of them were scattered throughout all over the world yes sir and and and, and I think most of them went down to Africa <laughs> and then just like the the Germany, you know, Africa was the one that kicked a whole bunch of people into slavery. Mm -hmm. And say, we y'all get out. I even somebody was telling me the other day that some kind of brother Addison that they said that they don't even recognize some of them. I ain't said all of them, don't get me wrong. But some of them don't even want to recognize the blacks in the United States. I agree. Now, now, believe it or not, I agree with that one wholeheartedly because, like you say, my experience, like you say, everybody loved Germany and all that stuff, but I told y'all, mine was not a good one. I was in Stuttgart, Germany, where they had the, the neo-Nazis was running around. Yeah. I was in military intelligence, so I'm, I'm a minority there within my own community. And if I would go try to hang out with people of my color over there, Deal with Africans. They didn't want me. I deal yeah. with the Turks. They didn't want you in their groups. So if you try to meld with a, with a brown person and you wasn't from America, them jokers look down on you. They they <laughs> treated they tried to treat me worse than the Germans did. Right. It's almost like you you oh, oh wait a minute, I got somebody here, brother uh Jackson. Lost him, I guess. Oh Jackson, no, no, you know, I see him. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get in on my computer. Okay. Okay. So I can see. So I can see a little bit more. All right. Put your put your uh, Roger that camera on and the microphone. This is, let me know if y'all get some feedback. Now you ain't tweaking and and chirping yet. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yes, I'm, I think I'm gonna leave my computer audio off this time. See what happens. Okay. Can you put your video on? Yeah, I can it? see everything. I can see everything now. Okay, on your computer. Yeah, I can see everything on the computer, and uh, but I'm using my phone for the mic. Okay. 
and I think we see you on the uh, your cell phone. So yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you're right, Chris. The fact is that that it's almost like they said, let's get rid of these people because they that they're, they're not one of us or something. But it definitely seemed like uh, there's an eerie comparison of the Jews that were kicked off in uh, Germany. <laughs> And, and as far as the people for us who's been in this country, we have been catching a whole bunch of heck. That's all I know. And all that's I know right. is that God is the God of the whole earth. And somewhere along the line, there's going to be a breakthrough. But I said, it's just, so to me, it's like that part of our verse 7 said, For a small moment I've forsaken thee, but with great mercy will I gather thee. He said in verse 8, In a little wrath I hid my face from thee, for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, says the Lord of thy Redeemer. For this is the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I have sworn that I will not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. Now, do we feel like, I don't know, but this group of people seem to have been a little wrath, wrath has occurred over 40 years uh, and still happening even now. <laughs> Do you, are we in agreement with that? Yeah. But, but the, the whole point is to believe that I understand that God is saying is that somewhere along the line he's going to return back to us because Isaiah 54 10 said, For the mountains shall depart. That means all the issues that we deal with. Leaders shall that he said, the hills shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Leaders shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says the Lord that has mercy on thee. And I be think one is willing is a great Chris is that 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 covenant of peace. And I know as we go through all these challenges, and I even was, God was even talking about the quote of the, the uh, Psalm 23. The fact is that, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou are with me. Amen. And I'm saying is that even now, I'm saying is that for us, even as black people going through the challenge we go through, God is still with us. And if we just hold on and, and keep our trust in him, he's the one that's going to bring us through. Well, you know, I, you know, Pastor, I tell you, it's, it's a mindset. It's an outlook, you know, because, um, and then sometimes you, you get to listening to the news and watching everything. It's, it's depressing is what it is. You look at the number of people now that are committing suicide and, and going through all kinds of anguish. To be honest with you, I'm like Chris said earlier, look here. Somebody paying me my full salary to sit at home and I'm doing probably one, one, one tenth of the work right now. I'm not mad at nobody. You know, I know it's affecting some people pretty badly, but, but I'm playing golf almost every day. I'm running. I'm enjoying myself. I see this as an opportunity. We got to start seeing things as an opportunity to do something different other than to anguish in where we are. You know, just like I was telling somebody the other day, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was known for the sky hook. He was amazing with it. Everybody talked about how great he was out of the sky hook. A lot of people don't realize that the only reason he ever developed the sky hook is because they banned the slam dunk. So he had to develop a way to score. So he went back to the gym and developed the sky hook. Then they, they, they legalized dunks. He probably didn't dunk another three or four times his whole rest of the season. <laughs> yeah. That doggone controversy gave him an opportunity to look at things differently and what he found out differently was better than what he had before. He thought that was the world. So, I mean, you know, it's all about how you look at things and what's going on and, 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 and taking advantage of the situation as it presents himself. And like you say, if you believe in God, he said that the desolate woman has many more children than the one that's married. Come on. Come on. So, so, so in that, you know, it's just, a, it's just they, in other words, it's, prop, in my opinion, we're still talking about politics. It's propaganda. There's a means of controlling the thinking of a people by depressing thoughts, by depressing scenery, by always bad news, by always something negative, by always something degrading. And then you get caught up in that cycle of life and, and, and you begin to feel the weight of the world on your shoulders as well. Like, you know, what's the use 
I mean, it's not going to get any better. I mean, yeah, you know what? It's life, and no one is exempt. No one is exempt. Yeah. But your outlook on it is going to have a lot of, it's going to have a huge effect on the outcome. And I think so. And so, you know, for me, I mean, I ain't never stopped smiling. I'm, I'm taking advantage of the situation, trying my best to, to enjoy these days where I ain't got to be beating the streets in the rat race, doing all these things everybody else doing. I can read more. I can relax more. I can work out more. I can focus on family. I mean, I can save a few dollars, you know, and probably gain a little weight with this refrigerator opening up all the time. Yes, but, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but I ain't going to be sitting around here hollering, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Can I say-